Well, uh, welcome this evening to this uh, Christmas Eve service, 2020, one that I'm sure will go down in infamy. I pray you've found yourself surrounded by friends and family and safely, and that you are comfortable and at rest in the spirit of the season. May the Lord be present to us this evening, and may He bridge the gap of technology that separates us this evening. May He reveal Himself in a special way. So in in normal years, if you remember, as we light the Christ candle, um, when you come in, you will have picked up a a little candle. Um, And generally, when we light the Christ candle, we then pass out the little lights, lighting them along the way. And as they they take light around the, the sanctuary, the imagery is a beautiful reflection of the light of Christ traveling out from this space into the world. Unfortunately, we are unable to do it that way. Um, But by the end of the service, um, um, there will be, uh, I will light one, and I will pass it on. So so hang with us at the end of the service, and, and we'll see the light of Christ moving throughout uh, our community. So hang with us then as we continue this evening here this invocation. O oh God, you make us glad by this yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he shows up to us in this life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, the one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Rejoice, O people of God. The light has come into the world. We light the candle of your nativity. With the company of heaven and with sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is the time of light and resplendent joy. God has been born among us. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels, glory, peace on earth, and goodwill. John declared that this great light is Christ, the Word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it, we behold God's glory, full of grace and mercy. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. Well, let's sing a song about joy to the world.
shepherds came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. <laughs> Here lay the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious night! I hear the angels singing, Hallelujah! Let the earth receive the King. I know the love has come. Sing it out, Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds wonder they couldn't hide it. Till everyone in sight. Well, thanks so much, kids. I know that you can't be with us today to sing a song, but the song that you sang a number of years ago is still a blessing. So thank you for that. Well, we're going to sing a song about hope. Would you join me? Hear the angels sing. There's hope for everyone to announce our King. There's hope for everyone. What good news? sing there's hope for everyone they came from afar there's hope for everyone wise men saw the star there's hope for everyone shepherds heard the choir there's hope for everyone from afar there's hope for everyone For the one who lights the darkness Bending low to be among us Bring your glory in the highest Jesus, come let us adore There's hope for everyone On the major floor There's hope 
Hello, church. Greetings from Roger and Vicki Dixon in Squim, Washington. Good evening, everyone. Um, happy Christmas. And we just want to send our greetings and our love to you and how much we miss you, especially this time of year. We have so many fond memories of our times together and um, around the tree and in our home. I especially want to thank whoever's been my secret sister this year for all the, the gifts and the love notes. You've made our transition here much easier, and we appreciate you. Merry Christmas to each of you. The scripture reading is uh, the story of the birth of Jesus, recorded in the book of Luke chapter 2 and verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Thanks, Roger and Vicki. It's so good to see your faces. Let's continue in worship. This is a song called Peace on Earth. Vision torn down by love. 
Isaiah 9, 2 and most of 3, and then we'll skip over and read verses 6 and 7. So Isaiah 9, 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest. Then skipping to verse 6, a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. This is the word of the Lord this evening. So, as we think about this light of the world coming, my imagination goes to those moments um, when, when, when helping dad with a project. Have you been here? Do you know where I'm going with this? Helping dad with a project, and he hollers out. In fact, this happened for me the other day as the dad. Samuel, come hold this light for me so I can get both my fingers in here, right? Before that, we're trying to hold the flashlight in your neck and trying to work, and I should have just got a headlamp, right? Uh, Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've been the person that needed the flashlight to be held for you. Or or maybe you've been the one holding the flashlight. And interestingly enough, the one holding the flashlight uh, can find themselves a little bit uh, wandering, maybe. How many times did did dad reach behind, or mom for that matter, did reach behind and readjust the flashlight? I'd say, no, right here. Right? You know those moments when holding the flashlight and maybe because you're not the one doing the work, you wander just a bit in your imagination and the flashlight and the spot that is on the workspace begins to slip. It begins to move away from the workspace. And so again and again and again, reaching over your shoulder to adjust the light and shine it back where it needs to be. This often is the imagination and imagery that I think of when I think of the light, when I think of the need to see. You see, all too often, I think we find ourselves wandering a bit in dark spaces, wandering a bit, maybe trying to do it on our own. You will recall the sermon from last Sunday where we find ourselves trying to do it ourselves, maybe, and and wandering and stumbling around in the dark. Perhaps I've shared this story with you before, but I remember my older brother and younger brother and I, my brothers, we would, there was a a subway cave tunnel in Northern California that we had run through a hundred times with flashlights. And there was one moment where we had decided we, we knew the cave, we knew the tunnel, we knew the direction of it. Let's see if we can run through it without flashlights. And so we proceed into the darkness, down the stairs, and off we went. Now, you can't really get lost in there. You might wander around a little bit, but it's a quarter mile. There's one bubble of a room where you could get maybe wandering around a little bit in, Uh, but, but it wasn't terrible. Once you find a wall, you can find it. But anyways, the point is, once we got in that darkness, and if you've ever been underground in darkness, it is, it is very, very, very dark. And as we went in there with confidence and excitement about running through the caves without a light, we had gotten ourselves turned around. And we, we saw the light of the tunnel coming in the distance, right? You've heard the term, the light at the end of the tunnel. 
This was very much one of those moments with equal excitement of going into the cave. We see the light at the other end thinking we've done it. We've gone through the cave in the dark. And when we got there, it turns out that that was the place we just entered. I don't know how, but in the darkness, we got ourselves turned around. We we didn't even realize because the darkness. I don't know if you've ever been in those moments. Maybe you've gone through the tunnel at Eisenhower, but but that's a lit tunnel. It's a little different than a dark tunnel that once you get into the middle of it, you can't see one end or the other. And it's a welcome sight when you do finally see there's that light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. Uh, But I know in another moment for me in this tunnel experience, there was a a place in the Yuba River where we used to go swim. And down in the deep end of this swimming pool was a tunnel under the rocks and through the rocks and back out. And I remember swimming into there and into that dark space. This time it's underwater, so it's, there's a little more at stake going on. It's pretty nervous. You don't want to get turned around, although once you get to the dark, it's pretty short. You can see the light on the other side. There's always a draw to the light on the other end of the tunnel. There's always a draw and a compulsion to walk towards light. Perhaps you've wondered why bugs go towards the blue light. I'm not real certain, but I do know I am drawn to light as well. Sitting in the dark woods of camp, the light is compelling. The the fire draws you in. There is comfort in that space. There is comfort in the lights. Perhaps you have found yourself at home by the fire or or out on the deck on the fire pit and you are just simply mesmerized by the light. This is the light of the world that has come in darkness. Isaiah doesn't leave the story at judgment. In other words, he doesn't leave the story in darkness. He doesn't leave the story at description and disorientation. He he doesn't leave us in the middle of the tunnel, if you will. Isaiah reminds the people of a hope that is promised. Isaiah reminds the people that there is light at the end of the tunnel, a king who comes, but maybe I would stretch the metaphor a little bit and say that not only is there light at the end of the tunnel, that light has come into the tunnel to reveal to us the pathway forward. Isaiah declares it, right? He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. And Christmas declares that he has come. Christmas declares that he has come. The light of the world has dawned in the darkness. Jesus Christ is a great light who has come. And He is not only the one holding the light for us, He is also the one reaching and adjusting the light and pointing the light in the right direction. And so as we understand how Christ is light. He is the director of light. He plays all these roles. So too has He invited us, His church, to play these roles. So maybe there will be the moment where you are holding the light for someone. 
Maybe there will be moments where you are the one that reaches over your shoulder to adjust the light and point it in the proper direction. That, that we all play these roles in the story. That in the coming of Christ, in the, in the birth, life, narrative of Jesus Christ, we are invited into his story. So he first is the light and then says, hey, come. Come and reflect the light as well. Come and do as I have done in this world. So as you wake up in the morning, Christmas morning, I would encourage you to read, read Luke 2. Read the story. Enter the story. Tell your kids the story that a great light has come into the world, shining the way for goodness' sake. May we, the church, may we be His people. May we be the light, the world, shining in the darkness. And so we take the Christ candle. And with that imagery I was telling you about before, we, we take the candle and, and we pass the candle, we pass the light, as a story, as an imagery of the light moving through our community, moving through our world. So, the light of the world, who has come? Merry Christmas. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
Amen. Well, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, what a beautiful moment, one of our favorite times of the year, um, the Christmas season and Advent. So, so hear this benediction. May the light and life of Christ reflect in your life. May you be the light of Christ in your neighborhood. May you be the light of Christ in your workspace. And may you know the peace and hope and joy and love of Christ at work in this world. Amen. Go in his peace.